Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. One of the challenges we're seeing in data center to data center connectivity and WAN connectivity in general is we're really seeing a significant change in the way data flows. It's no longer just about data center to data center traffic. So to help me with that conversation, I've asked the CEO of Silver Peak to come in and talk to us, David Hughes. David, thank you for joining us. Hi, George. Thanks for having me here. So uh, can you kind of sketch out what the problem is, David? Uh, you know, you had mentioned that we were talking about uh, going to a sort of a more traffic going to these SaaS sort of models. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So, you know, I think what helps is just to rewind the clock a little bit to when I started the company uh, 10 okay. years ago. And, you know, what did a WAN look like back then? Okay. And so, you know, what you had is, you know, a, a, maybe a data center headquarters, which might have been another data center, and then some branches around here and the WAN, it was basically defined as this network that would provide you connectivity between your physical locations. Right. So yeah. and these could have been MPLS links or uh, lease lines or whatever. Right. Um, but that's how it was 10 yeah, years ago. I, I call that the good old days, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> so well, Obviously things have changed a lot. So as you mentioned, the cloud has become more and more important. So if you kind of fast forward for, to you know, present day, uh -huh. what's happened over the last few years, is you know there's Salesforce, um, Office 365, um, Dropbox, all these um, SaaS services um, up here, and a bunch of the traffic from the branch, you know, used to always be going to the DC or to the headquarters. Now there's a bunch of traffic going up here and from this branch, and from headquarters there's traffic going here. Right. And this so these branches are totally uh, ignoring the headquarters at that point. They're going uh, direct in? Or? Well, some people want to do that, but there's security issues. So often oh, right. this is backhauled. And so this is virtually what wants to happen. Uh, okay. Often the traffic's going to backhaul in a, what's called a trombone, which right. isn't a good thing either. Then at the same time, you know, SaaS this is obviously mainstream. Everyone's doing this. Sure. Um, IAS, so your AWS, Azure, um, so VCHS, infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service, right. yeah. You've got a lot of traffic now coming up to here, and you know this diagram's getting messy, but this is how reality is today. Well, it's a mess, you've got, right? You've got this WAN down here, which IT had really tight control of. They could monitor it. If there's problems, they could fix them. Now you've got a bunch of your traffic flowing up to these services, which are part of your extended enterprise, but you've got no way to control or monitor that traffic. Do you have a feel for what the percentage of traffic is uh, that's going this way? I, I'm, I'm sure it varies, but on average? I, I think it varies a lot, but I think for a number of companies, it's crossed 50%. Wow, and I that's think it's kind of inevitable that right. you know, as people adopt software as a service and move to the cloud, this is going to become more important than the network down here, than your old corporate yeah. WAN. So this isn't a small problem. It's not a small problem. Okay. It's, it's big and it's only going to get worse. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So from a Silver Peak perspective, obviously, I, you know, at least in my experience with you guys, you guys specialize in this sort of data center to data center, optimizing that. What are you guys doing with this uh, type of traffic now? So obviously, you know, traditional WAN up is where, we, where we've uh, made our name, and especially mm -hmm. in this data center to data center piece. Mm -hmm. um, but what we've announced uh, in the last couple of weeks is what we call Unity. And what okay. Unity is is a way of addressing this problem. So. If I just go to raise okay. the problem and show you what we do. So let's take out all that mess and uh, well, nearly all of the mess. So you've got your corporate WAN. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you could um, take a Silver, you know, Silver Peak instances are in each of these branches. Imagine if you could get a Silver Peak instance and put it on the doorstep of Salesforce, the doorstep of Office 365, the doorstep of Dropbox, inside AWS, inside Azure, and inside VCHS. And then make this part of your network. So you can kind of think about having a, a fabric, a plane, if you like, where you can connect these oh, Silver Peak okay. instances, software instances, and all of your branches, your data center, your headquarters, all of these into one physical fabric that spans the globe that lets you really easily move information, not just between your physical locations, but between any location and, and a SaaS service or an IAS service, or even between, say, Salesforce taking your opportunity database and sucking it into Amazon. With this fabric, it makes it seamless and transparent to move that data around, um, whether it's physical locations or virtual. So, so a couple of questions really jump into my mind anyways on this is, is first, how successful are you getting all these different companies at, at, at putting this instance uh, up there? Um, so 
the great news is that with the way that the cloud's gone, mm -hmm. you don't need permission. Okay. So okay, well, there you go. So you know, at, we we run inside Amazon, we run inside VCHS. Of course, all of those companies with uh, hosting services want you to be able to run your VMs. And right. So sure. as a VM, this part's easy, and most people understand it. But your question's a good one. How do we get to the doorstep of Salesforce? And um, a big part of that is you know, a new generation of cloud hosting providers and cloud services, like what Equinix is offering with their performance hubs. So you can put a Silver Peak instance in Equinix's performance hubs, and you're one hop away. You're right at the doorstep of these services. Oh, okay. So, so that's, that's it's an a easy combination. To yeah. Now. Okay. Now you don't have to do it with Equinix. There's other ways, but that's a great example with the product that they have there. Okay. And I think the other key thing, and maybe we can kind of end with this, but so if I'm the sort of beleaguered IT guy here and I'm struggling with that exact the messy issue that we had before, yep. what are some of the key takeaways that I, I need to go tell my people about that why I should do this? Probably for IT, you're being you're on the hook to fix people's problems, and they're going to call out and tell you, "Hey, my SaaS service ABC isn't working well. It's been really slow since." last week mm -hmm. and you know for often in IT you didn't even know it's the first time you heard about right. you know service ABC sure and so what you want to be able to do is find out what services are being used okay um, who's using them and uh, be able to control and be able to prioritize ones that are important one of the things we do is we collect metrics from edge to edge so when there's a problem you can tell is it a problem in my branch location is it a problem getting that traffic across the corporate network across the internet to Salesforce or to ABC, or is the problem inside ABC? And being able to quickly resolve and figure out where the problem is means you're going to have a quicker time to resolving those people's problems. So what I'm hearing is kind of like an end-to-end -end visibility mm -hmm. at this point, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, that it seems like an obvious first step. Yeah. And then from a prioritization standpoint, I, it sounds like I could prioritize traffic going to, say, salesforce.com and maybe deprioritize traffic going to say, Dropbox or some other Facebook sharing. or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. you can do that. Okay, and then from a, 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 a is there any a cost savings or any ROI related to being able to do this as well? Um, um, yes, um, you know one of the things that you see as as this trend happens, more and more of the traffic's actually going out to the internet, and so that's forcing people to come back to the decision they've made maybe a few years ago to go with MPLS. Mm -hmm. As the internet traffic becomes more dominant, they wanna, may want to revisit that decision, and uh, perhaps in some locations choose to go with internet only access. And the Unity architecture we have lets them do that. Okay, great. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate this insight. Great, thank you. So that's an important point and something to think about as you start to relook at your WAN and start looking at traffic that's going up into these uh, SaaS providers. Uh, all of these things aren't created equal. Hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you can uh, improve performance and get that end-to-end -end visibility. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.